I don't. I'm the type of person yeah. that just not satisfied. Yeah. Okay. That's real. So you know, I, I I'm always looking for the next high. Yeah. You know, the next uh-huh. you know thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. I can do better. Right. Like this job is not it. You know, <laughs> I right. want a better job. You know, I want a better car. I want, right. I want better this. You know, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't yeah. consider myself like having many proud moments. Hmm. Or what about what would be your most, not even proud, but just let's say happy moment, happy memory, where you were the most excited, most happy, most. Like, man, this, this was a great moment. Like, man, I'll never forget this. I would have to say I was in this basketball league and I scored like 50 points. Okay. One time. Mm-hmm. That was like one of the proudest moments I ever had. Good. Okay, let's let's <laughs> stick with that. Let's let's unpack that. Okay. Why do you think you score 50 points? Why do I think? Mm -hmm. That you score 50 points. That's a lot of points to score in the game, by the way. That's a whole lot of points to score in the game. Yeah, I was surprised. Yeah, congrats to you. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, congrats to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Why do you think that? Probably because I was just aggressive. Mm -hmm. I was aggressive at the time. I wasn't going to let nothing stop me. I was just, you know, focused, so focused on scoring and trying to trying to win the game. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did whatever it took, you know, and that, at that time it took me scoring all those points. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And we I think we won by like three. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. One of Jordan. Nights. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with, with, with the, the, the yeah, rest of the team wasn't wasn't. Yeah, yeah. kind of keeping up. Yeah, Scotty Pippen giving you thirty on the side. Yeah, yeah okay. It's one of those. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one of those moments. Okay. Yeah. So again, so let's unpack this a little bit. So, score fifty. Focused, we wanted to win the game. Mm-hmm. Why? This is one of those why, 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 is till we get to that centerpiece. So, why were you so focused? Why did you want to win the game? Why were you so dialed in? Uh, I guess to have that feeling, that 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 feeling of winning. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, to be happy, mm-hmm. to to sit there and be satisfied. Yeah. Like, hey, I did this, and mm-hmm. you know, uh, we won the game. That was that was the main thing. Okay, now play that play that sentence back one more time. That last sentence. Did you notice what you just said? Winning the game? No, 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 no. Don't leave that word out. Satisfied? No, 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 no. <laughs> what did you this is a part of why I'm I'm so crazy for God right now. This 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 observation. I do this to myself, so now I'm doing this to you. What was your last sentence? I was I was just waiting for you to say it. I said, uh, that I, that I wanted to win the game. No, right. you didn't. Don't, don't leave that word out. Uh-huh. And I hope our listeners are are processing this with us because that, that the I same was, would be true that for I was them. satisfied, right? That you were satisfied, satisfied because of what? That last sentence. There's, there's just one word that you're missing that you just said. That I helped the team. Help help the team win the game. Yeah, but you use the word we. You said, you said. Um, now I lost the your sentence we. verbatim, mm-hmm. but in there you said we won the game. Yeah, we won the game. So I would like to picture. So this was where at, what 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 a venue was this in? Uh, in L.A. It was uh, some gym in L.A. Downey, 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 Downey Gym in LA. Okay, so let's pretend now. Were there people in the in the stands? Yeah, there's a few. Okay, so let let's 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 go ahead and empty out the stands. 
Okay. No one, no one, no one's in the stands. Mm-hmm. All right. Did you have like a coaching staff or like people around? No, no. no this is like an adult league. Okay. So were there anyone on the bench? Yeah. For you, for your team. Yeah, we had one person. Okay, so let's wipe that person away. Okay. So now it's just y'all five, right? Yep. Okay. So now let's take the four away. So now it's just you. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the only person, now let's just pretend, okay. the only person that's going to know that you won is you. It's not going to be spoken about. It's not going to be written about. It's not going to be aired on television. It's not going to be shown on highlights on Instagram. No one's going to know okay. except CJ, mm-hmm. the score of that game. There's no point. Everything stops. Yep. When you stop contributing, everything stops. Hmm. When you take away others, everything stops. Yeah. And so that's what I observed. Like, what do I care about more? Trying to stick to what I want in life? Or do I care about being a part of life? Hmm. Yeah. That's good. So, yeah, man. Yeah. That's good. Yep. And that's the nugget. I mean, we, we really come full circle with this whole relationship thing. That's the missing element. Now, you asked me about, was I confident with my wife? Mm-hmm. Right. That was that was one of the questions that, that we had. Yeah, Th- this is full circle. And I, I didn't even know that it was going to tie this way. This is the missing element to why most marriages and most relationships don't succeed because we don't go into the relationship and we don't go into the marriage with with a mindset, a mindset on contributing unknowingly we go in first of all we get into it because of lust or passion or i like this person like whatever you want to put into that rarely is it i consciously want to contribute to improving your life now i'm not saying that it doesn't happen but the majority how many men how how many altars can you walk up on when they are about to say, I do and say, ho, 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 let me ask you guys a question. <laughs> right. Right. Ho, ho. <laughs> before you guys say, I do, let me ask you guys a question. Which of you consciously is coming into this relationship with the purpose to contribute to improving that person's life? You're going to get some. I'm not, I, I, I would never downplay humanity and say there's no one out there because yeah. I was I, I I mean you don't it's in hindsight that you see how God's grace allowed you to become that person when you asked me were we confident if I was going to make it she was going to make it if we were going to you know um, and that's funny because even before we started this recording two days ago when you share with me about what we're going to talk about, mm-hmm. this memory comes up. And so now I get to share this memory. I remember that this was right when uh, Pastor Kerwin got the offer to, to come out here. Okay. And he, he had already accepted it and we were helping him move. So uh, for the listeners, uh, we were in Toledo, Ohio, and uh, we were packing up the Mannings. We we're packing up this big old truck. And I remember it like yesterday. They had went into the house to grab some more stuff. The moving truck was parked on their street. And Andrea and I, we were standing outside the truck. Okay. And I don't know why we did this. Because by that time, we knew that we were going to get... Well, actually, we were already... Were we married at that time? Or they were going to... Yeah, they were going to marry us, which they did, a few months before we had the wedding. So we got married in September. We had the wedding in May. Okay. All right. So legally, we were married by the Mannings, but we had the wedding with Pastor Culp. So we're sitting outside this this uh, uh, truck, and I remember, I, I I don't remember how it came to be, but I looked at her. She looked at me, and we said, "I will look out for you, and you'll look out for me." So we'll never have to look out for ourselves. 
that was the foundation of our marriage. Like that was the agreement. I'll look out for you. You'll look out for me and I'll never have to look out for myself. Hmm. And that's 24 years later. And we're happily married, not just married, but happily married. That was the foundation. And so as I look back at that now, in some ways that was, that was the focus to, or that was the aim to contribute to the other person's life. Because I'm saying, I'm gonna look out for you. Mm -hmm. You're gonna look out, like that was the words that we used. Now, 20 something years later, we have a different vocabulary. So now we can articulate it differently, but though, you know, 23 years old, she's 18. Those were the words that we were using. Mm -hmm. I'll look out for you, you'll you'll look out for me. Um, And I think that's what's helped to contribute to us having a successful marriage to where we're still together and we still love each other. We we still, you know, want each other sexually. Mm-hmm. We still want each other uh relationally. Mm-hmm. We still we still date. We still go on vacations. We still, you know, love our children. Our children are still with us. Um there's never been a day of separation. Um you know, that's not bragging, but that's just saying, I mean, because that's really how it should be. But that's also coming from not seeing that um, played out in in my family mm-hmm. and not having a template or a example of that. Um, so again, man, it, it, it's just, again, that's, that's, that's another reason why I trust in God the way that I do, because he showed us how to be married and, and how to keep, keep Christ um, at the center, man. But, but yeah, it, it, it's, you know, if you see yourself as, as a contribution, then the mindset will always be, how can I contribute to this woman? Or if she's the woman to this man versus how can I get something from them? Yeah. So, yeah. I never, I never heard it that way. Um, that marriage was, you know, looking out for your, your other. Yeah. I never, I never heard it that like that way. When you say it like that, it's, that could have saved a lot of marriages. Hmm. Yeah. Because now it's rare to even have, you know, wow. 25 years of marriage, That's 30 true. years of marriage. Yeah. People getting divorced <laughs> within a year, months. <laughs> like, <laughs> within a year. Yeah. Like, yeah. What talking, is this? I made a mistake. And yep. All this. Yeah. And that's. That's a blessing. Even my parents, you know, they've been together for yeah forty something years. Yep. That's that's a blessing. Mm-hmm. And that's something that everybody should want. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You know, being alone is uh it's not it's not ideal. Mm-hmm. Um and it's not what we were made for. And you know and you notice like with even the ultimate punishment Hmm. when you're in jail yeah they don't beat you (laughs) no they don't they don't (laughs) kill you nope because you did some extra if you did some extra (laughs) in there where you going right you're going to the hole yeah by yourself yep yep isolation wow look at that wow that's a great point dang that's a great point alone alone that's a great point oh look at that that but see that's that's observation Mm -hmm. you observed that that's an that's an analogy but you 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 observed it i never thought about that yeah Hmm. Yeah. wow so with your um with your relationships um, you know how you grew up. Yeah. You know, you said at at the beginning, you know, your dad wasn't there. Was it um, kind of like a promise to yourself that you would mm-hmm. always be there for your kids? Was that 
you know, the the way you grew up mm. made you want it want to change that. How did you, you know, you come a do you, do you sometimes think like how did I even come to <laughs> right love this way mm. to have this mm. this this urge mm -hmm. to you know be with my kids and love my kids and I'm gonna always be there mm -hmm. like you didn't grow up with that. no 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 absolutely not so <laughs> not even a little bit yeah like none <laughs> and to see you as literally, a father literally yeah you know how you are as a father mm -hmm. and how your kids are is yeah. how <laughs> right now <laughs> yeah and 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 that's the christ man that's that's where i always go back to that's 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 god that's christ man it's i mean it's definitely christ first and then i look at mentors that i've had like men in my life that i've I've had because mm -hmm. as soon as I got into the church, you know, from Pastor Kerwin to to Vince Wiggins, um, you know, coming out here, you know, to California, and and there were other men in the church there as well. Mm -hmm. But coming out here to California, you know, getting you know c connected to some mighty men, you know, Dwayne Cantrell, Rudy Carrasco, Herlin Redman, um, just just men after men after men, you know, Brad Arnold, uh, um, Eric Brown. Just all these men, 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 um, Earl Brown. Just now, I wasn't looking at them as fathers. Mm -hmm. I was just looking at them as men who were committed to God. So again, is it's it's, and I I think like if you're someone who believes in in the devil or believes in like this evil spirit or whatever you want to name it. Like this whole falling away right now, this whole turning our backs on God and finding other ways to justify not trusting and not believing in God. When you take God out the picture, man has nothing to rule him. He is a free fool. I was gonna say a free agent. He's a free fool. Man is a fool without God. We are, we are tyrants without God. We are heathens. We are, we are lusts. Just, we, we are off the hook without something greater than us to help regulate us. Um, That's a good point. I heard, just I heard something way crazy. I heard something that there was a, a country mm -hmm. um, that took, that took out religion Ooh. and it was just chaos. Mm. Is it recent? Uh, I want to say a while back. Um, I, I don't, I don't remember what it was, but I, I heard something that they did a study yeah. or something where they took the religion out okay. of the country, and it was just total chaos. <laughs> total chaos. Just say nothing. Yeah. To nothing to. Or maybe it. it was a book that I read. Um. Wow. Yeah. I think it was ca called undistracted mm. and he he said something about there was like a study or something and wow without religion it was just yeah total chaos <laughs> i believe it man it, yeah so that so for me that was how it, it was seeing men dedicated to something greater than themselves so the way, that, the way that that played out was seeing men look to God and me admiring those men who look to God made me look to God. And the more I looked to God, the more I wanted to love people. And I think it just happened organically. It's y'all the closest to me, y'all getting the most of my love. It's already built inside. Yeah, it's just that's, yeah, it just comes with, yeah, it just comes with it. Yeah, yeah. It comes, it, with, the, it, it comes with the console. Yeah, I, right, right, right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was definitely nothing I I consciously woke up to. No, and there was never a commitment of I'm going to always be in their lives and things such as that. No, it, it was just I couldn't even imagine anything else. 
-hmm. it was supposed that's how it's supposed to be um yeah yeah it just flows from the top down and that's why it's like dude i mean like i said i i well we were talking off camera off show but it was like i've never considered myself to be like an apologetic christian someone who like battles the faith and and who defends the faith but maybe in my own way i'm becoming one who defends the concept the idea the existence of god because can you imagine a merit see and and that's the thing everything wherever i've succeeded in all the areas that i've succeeded i'm going to always point you back to christ because christ was always the one that that gave me a reason to to show up the way that I showed up that led to me being successful. Mm -hmm. If you take Christ out of everything that I've ever done, there is no succeeding. There is no good dad. There is no good husband. There is no nothing. Because my passions and my desires as a man, whether it's to watch porn or to step out on my wife or uh, to beat my kids or to use drugs or to like anything that you would name that would create a riff in your marriage or a riff between your children. Mm -hmm. If any of that ever came to mind for me, because I'm consciously and continuously recommitting and resubmitting myself to God on a daily basis, a lot of that just gets plucked out. Like you don't get to take root. Because I'm because I'm constantly taking you back to God. Oh, thoughts of pornography and that becoming some addiction in my marriage. Well, I'm constantly taking you back to God. God, I I want to do this, but you you've created me in 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 an image that frees me from that. So let's deal with this because this don't make me feel good. Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's stay free of that. Okay, God, I feel like going off, but you made me in an image that frees me from having to go off. So let's deal with this. So I'm constantly taking it back to God. If you take God out the equation, who are you taking it to? Who are you taking your, who are you taking it to? And who's empowering you to defeat it? And so that's why I'm like going 10 times harder for God now like never before because i'm like no 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 man cannot do this on his own you cannot be in a successful relationship that's healthy on your own now you may be in a marriage for 50 years it don't mean that it's healthy True. and it don't mean that you're happy so what are you what are you doing what do you think that you're doing that's when you're in those struggles? What are you doing that you're saying that you're bringing it back to God? Mm -hmm. Are you praying more? Or are you when you when you have those thoughts or when you get angry and stuff like that? What are you doing that destroys that that mood mm -hmm. I'm I, I'm taking it back to to that philosophy because for example if I'm the creation of God which is an extension of God like how you talked about your children earlier they're an extension of you mm -hmm. right we can we can we, we can one of my mentors which is another brother that I forgot to mention earlier Rusty Proctor shout out to Rusty Proctor um he taught me we can teach what we know, but we can only reproduce what we are. So you reproduce your children. They're an extension of you. That means that your children have an element of you. They're going to not only look like you physically, but they're going to think like you and behave like you in some way. You ever look at your kids and say, oh, man, she got my laugh. Or, oh, man, she got my, my uh, temper. Or, oh, man, she's got my quirkiness. Like they take, they, they actually extract pieces of you and then they reform it in their own way so she, you know your daughter is a a female in a sense version of you 
she's taking something from you. Mm-hmm. So now she she plays it out in, in her own way, but you can clearly see, oh, she got that from me, mm-hmm. right? Okay, so when I take it back to God, what I'm doing is I'm taking that thing back to the realization and, and the philosophy that if I'm God's creation, I am a, an extension of God. Would my idea of God, who I believe God is, would he succumb to, and we can just use, and for some reason, maybe some man out there needs to hear this. Um, so I'm, I'm going to just stay with the whole pornography thing. Um, would God succumb to the temptation of watching pornography? Like, if I'm an extension of God, mm-hmm. that means I'm a part of God. And I won't go down that path, but I'll insert this. If I'm a part of God, an extension of God, then I'm very much God-like. Now, I won't go too far with that because some people are like, oh, you you know, that's just blasphemous. But, okay, I'm like him. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're in his image. We're in his image. So would he succumb to this? Now, that's not to say I'm perfect and that, and that I don't fall and make mistakes and bump my head and, 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 and screw it up. I'm talking about consistency mm-hmm. over time. I'm going to win more times than I lose. Yeah. So w- when I'm taking it back, I'm saying, okay, now this thing that I want to do, does this align with the image that I have of what I am? I'm an extension of God. This, no, that don't align with that. So now let's deal with it. Now, when I say let's deal with it, here's, here's, here's literally, here's literally what's happening. And this is an interesting thing. This is really one of those like step by steps. When you take it back to God and you say, does, does this pornography align with the image that I have of myself? Mm -hmm. You are forced to then say, if I do it, I am not me right now. I'm, 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 I'm not being who I am. I'm not being true to me. I'm not being of integrity, not being of character. Like this is not who I am. Okay. When you have that, now this is my experience. I, I can't say that it's bulletproof and that if you do it, you're going to always succeed. I'm just telling you my story. Okay. When I have that much dialogue, the want to look at the, look at the movie or look at the clip or masturbate or do whatever it fades all that talking I'm doing. What, what tends to happen when you want to do something that you know, you shouldn't do, whether it's get angry and go off, you know, go beat up somebody, go, go, go tell somebody off or watch pornography. When you are tempted with doing something, you know, you really shouldn't do. You normally do it. Knee jerk reaction. Do it. Boom. A lot of times I'm on social media, you're scrolling through, you see something that you know that you shouldn't see. If you indulge in it and stay in it, it's, it's normally very fast. You just boom, and now you're in it. Mm-hmm. When you take it back and you have that much conversation, so much is happening in that conversation, so much logic and reasoning. And I believe that God's spirit is actually working, working through that conversation as well. You don't want to do it mm-hmm. because you're taking so much time to unpack. But I'm the creation of God. I'm the, I'm the contribution of God. I'm an extension of God. I'm greater than this. I'm better than this. I'm sweeter than this. This would degrade me. This would lower me. This is, this is beneath me. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is nothing compared to what I am, to who I am. And you start to like, actually, man, this is like... I don't know, how, I don't know how, how better to say it than you start to really say, like, I'm, I'm, I'm a king. I'm royalty. I'm like, I'm great. Mm-hmm. And this is so weak and, and so beneath me. And so, ugh, I don't do this. I do this. And that's been my process. And it's just, I have that conversation. And, and I, you know, more times than not, I choose to lay aside that passion and go back to, to, you know, aligning with who I've come to know myself to be. So, but like you said, um, you know, you said once you're in it, Mm -hmm. it just like that. Yeah. So 
I've noticed that, you know, once you're in it, I call it unconsciousness. Mm -hmm. You go unconscious, like you black out. Mm -hmm. You don't see nothing else but that. Uh huh. You know? Yeah, yeah. And you're not thinking about nothing else but that. Yeah. And I want to get to the problem before mm. you go unconscious. Yep. So with that, mm -hmm. how, what things should be practiced? Yeah. If you, and you can, you can apply this to anything. Mm -hmm. um, and again, keeping it in the context of preserving relationships mm -hmm. because, um, and the reason why I want to preface this with the relationship piece is again, this, this goes back to preserving your relationship either with God, mm -hmm. preserving your relationship with yourself mm -hmm. or with other people. Yep. Um, because, it, and again, if we keep using the context of a marriage, that's a, excuse me, that's, that's a great analogy. So if we say I'm a man who has the passion to watch pornography or images of women that I know I shouldn't, mm -hmm. which comes up because I'm on social media. So I deal with that. Yeah. Right. So I'm in a marriage that, that, that I'm committed to. I'm in a relationship with God that I'm committed to. Mm -hmm. And I'm in a relationship with myself. Mm -hmm. So how do I, how, how, how do I protect those three relationships? Right. All right. So how, how do you get to it before you know, you, you, you get to that point where you're unconscious. Mm -hmm. You set up, I want to say boundaries, but basically you go through when you're at your strongest, when you're at your most conscious to who you are and to who you want to be, you leverage that time. You can't do it when you're weak. Cause when you're weak, you want what you want, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's, yeah. it's a passion. It's a lust. It's, it's, you want what you want. But when you're at your strongest, like you, you prayed up, you feel good, you're, you're strong in God, you go through and you say, what are the things that I can do that will make this 10 times harder to get to? So for me, there are certain things where I have literally gone through and erased apps. I don't do, for example, I'm gonna just keep it all the way 100 because there may be some cats out there that, that I deal with this. TikTok, mm -hmm. I tried TikTok for a while. Cause my kids, oh, you know, with your content, you get on TikTok, you know, you, you post your videos, you know, you can really grow your audience and people are really blowing up on TikTok. Yeah. All right, cool. I'll try it. Whatever. TikTok, no matter what I do, as soon as I open that TikTok up, have, 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 have dressed woman mm -hmm. shaking her butt, you know, uh, got on a bikini or whatever. And you scroll another one, you scroll another one. <laughs> I've even yep. tried to play with the algorithm by going into the search and literally searching a million Christian videos, Christian motivation, hashtag Christian, hashtag Jesus, hashtag God, um, motivational videos for God. Like I'm trying to train the algorithm <laughs> to, because, right? Because it's, it's, you know, as my kids would say, no, they're going to show you videos uh, that are related to the videos that you like. Okay, well then I'm gonna just TD Jakes, Creflo yeah. Dollar, uh, mm -hmm. TD Jakes, Creflo Dollar. I'm gonna I'm just find everything, you know, Joel Osteen, I don't know, just anyone who's popular that's of the faith yeah. that might be making content. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking for everybody that's a preacher or positive just to create the algorithm to look for Christian content. To drain out don't work. other stuff. Don't work. Or at least it didn't work for me. Mm -hmm. So I tried it. Didn't work. I erased the app. A couple months later, I said, okay, yeah, I'm going to try this TikTok thing again because one of my boys that that's online, he has some success. Why not? Let me try it again. So I download the app again, open it up. Oh, okay. A little cleaner. All right, cool. I can deal with it. Let me start posting some videos. And when you go on there to open it up to post your video, it doesn't give you like a default to your home screen. It opens up just the general feed. Yeah. So as soon as you open it up, boom, here go the girl again. I I I went through this three times. And on this last time, I said, you know what? 
if I'm going to blow up, I'm going to blow up. Hell with TikTok. If I'm going to blow up, I'm going to blow up. Mm -hmm. I don't got to blow up on TikTok. Mm -hmm. God is way too big. That is a problem. Yeah. So I erase you. If I got to blow up through TikTok, I ain't blowing up. I'll just stay where I am. So that was a conversation that I had with myself. So now on my phone, I don't got TikTok. The thing for me with social media is I don't get on it to be on it. I get on it to post content that I hope would inspire somebody. Yeah. So it does me no good to keep something like that in my way. I'm putting a boulder in my own way. So number one, it's do as best you can to make getting to the thing that's your problem mm -hmm. 10 times harder. Take it off. Whether it's an app, remove it. What are you really missing out on? Right. Do the value, you know, you know, the whole value evaluation. Mm -hmm. It's, oh, I don't want to lose it because, okay, ask yourself the real question. <laughs> if you lose blank, how much are you really losing? Yeah. Because brothers would justify it. Well, if I erase uh, so and so, then I'm not going to be able to keep up with, with my family. Okay. Well, well, maybe you should just start calling them more or reach out to them more. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that that's number one, man. Just make getting to that thing 10 times harder. The other thing is, is that you know, with technology, there are safeguards. There's things that you can um, because I even considered it back when you know porn was a, a struggle for me. That there's apps that you can give your spouse that can monitor your usage. And if you go on a website, it will send them an alert. Mm. Um, so things like leveraging technology to bring in accountability mm. in whatever context it is, whether it's you with your girl, your homeboy, somebody from the church, you set up whatever your struggle is and use an app or something that's going to tell them that you've entered a, a space that, that you shouldn't. Mm -hmm then you're least likely to enter that space. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but just like whatever context you put that in, make it hard for yourself to get to it. Have the real talk conversation. How bad do you need whatever you're trying to get rid of? And then, you know, three, you know, bring in accountability. And here's something else. If you are a person of integrity, this, this has worked for me like nothing else. Hurry up and give somebody your word. Hurry up and give somebody your word. What I mean by that is, is if I came to you and said, CJ, in the year 2023, man, I'm giving you my word. I ain't watching porn. If I do, I commit to coming to you and confessing immediately. Mm -hmm. Now I've done it. Now I said it. I hurried up and said it. I got it out. And now, you know, I said it. Now, going forward, at some point in time, because you're going to be tempted, mm -hmm. if you do do it, that shame is leveraged now. Because see, and that's a whole other episode. I, I can't wait till we get into some of that content. <laughs> Everything that we consider bad has two sides to it. Shame ain't always a bad thing. Shame can actually be used to help your butt move forward. Mm. Now I can shame myself into progress. Now, again, that's a whole other episode, but it's dope when you really understand the psychology of utilizing emotions to actually help you move forward. Some fascinating stuff, man. But if I say I'm not going to do this and then I do it, I'm going to be faced with one of two things. Either I'm going to come to you and say it, which is going to be devastating because now we got to look you in the eye and say, I did that. Yeah. And now you can hold me accountable. You can pray for me. You can extend forgiveness. We can go through that and I can be healed. And I can move forward or I can keep it a secret and that eats and eats and eats at me. And that prevents me from wanting to do that thing even more because the more you do it, the more ickiness you feel. And now it's this tension that the only way you get free of that tension is to eventually confess. Wow. So either way, it, it's so those are just some of the techniques that I've used over the years is um, so with me, that's my wife. I, I tell her, you know, what, what I'm committed to. And then we we set up safeguards where, you know, she's able to always 
um, ask me questions. She's always able to, you know, question me. Um, you know, we do, you know, a weekly check-in and I just tell her how, how I'm doing. Hey babe, this nice. week, uh, I hit some trouble spots. Mm -hmm. Um, this week I didn't do this. I didn't do that. Or, Hey, this week was a great week. Um, had no issues or when it gets really bad, it's like, yep, I, I messed up. I, I, I totally went there this time and you know, I'm sorry. And you know, whatever you got to do, but man, just, if you have an ounce of integrity, mm -hmm. hurry up and tell somebody something that you want to be held accountable to. Yeah. And then by the time you get it out your mouth and say it, well, now it's too late. And now it's already said, and that, that's going to help you going forward. Nice. So those are just some simple ways to do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Man. Yep. Well, some good information. Yeah, some man. Good yeah. Information. Yep. <laughs> how long we? How long have we ran this one for? That's probably about a good. Probably about a good. Yeah, about probably about a good hour or so. Close to two hours. Well, right yep. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, and then I'll go ahead and cut this piece out. Um, so, um, again, the intention of of today's episode. Um, was to just talk about relationships and to share, you know, our hearts and just to share this conversation with you in hopes that something we might say might spark something within, within you that might give you um, some insight into maybe something that you're dealing with issues and struggles that you're, that you're facing. The biggest thing that we wanted to do was just address how precious relationships are something that we all deal with, something that we all face, something that we're all engaged in on some level, whether you believe in God or not, whether you're, you know, married or not, um, or, you know, whether you're very conscious or very aware of your relationship with yourself. Those are three areas that you will eventually have to face. Um, if you haven't asked yourself already, why am I here? What is my purpose? Uh, is there a God? Is God real? Um, so that's your relationship with something greater than you, uh, whether you are someone who's dating or you're in a marriage, um, then, you know, or I mean, really relationships with, with other people on your job, in the marketplace, at the gym, wherever you are, there's just other people. So uh, we talked about relationships with others and then relationships with yourself, which is the most important. And we don't always get a chance to develop our relationship with ourselves normally what happens is as soon as you know mom you know pushes you out the womb then you are you are instantly thrust into relationships with other people and the older you get right as a toddler and maybe around five or six years old then people start putting demands on you whether they're aware of it or not they started they start asking you questions about what do you want to be when you grow up and you know you should think about this and you should do that and you should do this or or we do this or our family does that so it's rare it's rare that a child is given the opportunity to learn anything about themselves before they have to take on the family way or the environment's way you know yeah. well we grew up in this hood so we all bloods we grew up in this hood we all crips we 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 over here so we roll with this we we over here so we do it like this um you 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 are so and so like like whatever your last name is you know for me you were lynch so lynches do x y and z you know it, the list goes on and on and on where we are pretty much programmed to do what other people in our environment are doing and to take on their identity so it's rare that we get the chance to actually learn ourselves or to really have any sense of self so we dealt with those three, God, others, and yourself. And our hope is that through our conversation, something stood out, something sparked something. Um, we would love to hear from you. All right. So whether it's you're watching on YouTube, you can drop comments down below. Whether you are um, someone who wants to send something more personable, then you can reach out. I'm the possible uh, and you can you can send me an email uh, through the contact page and I'll get that information over to CJ as well. Uh, if you're bold enough and gracious enough to leave a, a review, whatever uh, podcast 
platform you watch or listen to, I should say, Spotify, Google, iHeartRadio, Apple, um, the list goes on and on. We're, we're everywhere. Um, you can leave a review. We'd love to hear from you. Any questions you have, any points of clarity, um, any kudos, any comments, anything, just any feedback. We would greatly appreciate it. We want to know that we're, that we're providing something of value. The way that we want to structure this going forward is to really just have conversations between ourselves that you can kind of peer into, that you can relate to and say, yep, I find myself there or I was thinking about that and y'all y'all nailed it or you know what I was I was feeling that way too and I didn't know what to think about that you guys gave me something to think about that's our hope that's our wish and and really that's our prayer um in closing just wanted to to pray with you um you know prayer you know as you can tell from the from these episodes it's at the center of everything I even wrote a book the corridor to confidence a step-by-step guide on how to cultivate confidence in prayer prayer is the center of confidence Mm -hmm. and the reason for that let me just say is that there's no confidence like knowing that you are connecting to something not only greater than you but something that created you and wanted you desired you and brought you to be when when you're connected with the source of life is there is no there's that that's a confidence that man can't take away anything that man gives you man can take away man can take it away if if your confidence is in your job your boss can take that away if your confidence is in your rank and file you in the military whatever rank is above you they can snatch that away you do one thing that they don't agree with you know it's gone Um, If you're in a relationship and your confidence is in the other person, as much as you love them and you appreciate them, if you do something, you know, wrong enough and they don't want to rock with you no more, where's your confidence, right? Mm -hmm. So the reason that we really want to push prayer hard is because prayer creates that unshakable confidence because you're, you're looking to and you're building your confidence on something that's untouchable. It's it's incorruptible. It's untainable. God cannot be reached, right? The Bible talks about putting your treasure where man cannot get to it. You see, anything on this earth that we can touch with our hands, that's too unstable. People can get to that. People can touch that. People can mess that up, right? I've I've had two houses burned down. What if I would have trusted in those houses, right? I've had cars stolen. What if I would have trusted in those cars, right? You name it, you frame it. You put it into your context, but what I was giving you examples for is, is that we can often put our trust in things, tangible things that will be here today and they'll be gone tomorrow. God isn't like that. God is, God is, is, is then now and forevermore. God is untouchable. You can't get to him and change his mind and, 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 and fool him. You can't get to him and bribe him. You can't get to him and make him feel some type of way. He's God. He's going to be God. And so what greater foundation, man, to, to lay your confidence, right? To, to, to build your confidence, I should say. He is stable. He is secure. And if you, if you, if you, if you rock with God and you put your, you put your confidence in him, you build your confidence on him, then that's what your life becomes. Stable, secure, unshakable, unbreakable. Yes, you will go through trials. Yes, you will go through temptations. Yes, the rain will come down on the righteous and the unrighteous. Yes, tragedy will hit you like it hits everyone else. Calamity like everyone else. Deaths and problems and issues and struggles and and conflicts. We all going to get that. But with God, you always have hope. With God, you always have confidence that you're going to make it out and that you're going to make it through. And that's the difference. Anything that you've heard or will hear from us in these episodes or the episodes to follow, we really want you to know that we have sincere hearts, man, to not try to convince you to become a Christian or or strong arm you or force you into the church or force you to believe what we believe. We just want to bear the image of God and to say, man, our lives before God, before Christ, this is what it was. And at some point we decided to, to rock with Christ, to rock with God. And, and this is how we're doing now. And to just invite you uh, to, to partake in that, man. Um, 
it's just really for me and and maybe for cj as well it's just your your quality of life goes up so even if you're not a heaven and hell you know uh, well when we die we just go back into the earth i ain't here to debate that we're not here to debate that um how about let's just deal with life right now (laughs) your quality of life will dramatically improve when you allow jesus to become a lord right and a savior yeah amen life just gets better so if you just want a better life uh then i want to close this out in prayer but before i do anything else man you want to share uh with the people um no it's just we're all a work in progress yes um none of us are perfect like he said we we go through trials and tribulations and there's a god that loves you there jesus loves you and he's there for you open arms at any moment in time and he's he's always going to be there for you so uh you have that opportunity at any point to have that relationship with him and it's it's trust me it's worth it (laughs) it's definitely worth it so yeah why don't you go ahead and uh lead us in prayer all right so if you're listening and if you are at a place where uh, you 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 want to welcome Christ into your life, uh, then just say this simple prayer with me. And I'll also say um, a quick prayer after this one for anyone who just wants to rededicate and um, just get closer to the God that they've already welcomed into their lives. So for those of us who want to, for, for the very first time, to just uh, receive God into their lives, say this with me. God, I believe. I believe that you are, and I believe that I need you. Come into my life. Jesus, become my Lord, become my Savior. Lead my life from this day forward. Amen. Amen. And for those of you who are rededicating your life, starting over, starting fresh, getting back in the game, then just say this simple prayer with me. Jesus, I believe. I believe that I need you. I ask that you would come so close that I would never be able to shake you again. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The Bible says all we need to do is believe. Belief is powerful. Yes. Everything you're doing in your life is because of something that you believe. I like to put it, beliefs dictate behavior. It's that simple. Mm-hmm. You do what you do because of what you believe. So all you need to do is believe that God is and that he is one or the one who created you and who is able to show you how to live the greatest life that you could possibly imagine. With that, I want you to reach out again because the whole church experience, walking with God experience, it can get messy, it can get confusing. So if you want guidance on that, if you're someone who wants guidance, I want to just throw you out there If you want guidance and you just gave your life to God, I am the possible. That's what it says on the shirt. I am the possible.com. Go to that website. You click the contact button. Send me an email. Let's connect. Let me give you some information to get you started. All right. All right. Love you guys. Praying for you guys. Believing in you guys. Until next time. Salute. Salute. Peace.